Um, I just wanted to say thank you for for joining the interview for the watercolor show. Absolutely. Thank you for inviting me. Um, so I was looking at your artwork for that you submitted at the Alpha Art Gallery. And I just wanted to ask, like, what was the inspiration behind like the color choice and like your art style in general? Because it feels very like naturistic. My art, my art style is varies according to the topic and the medium because I also paint in oil paint. Um, and so when it comes to <clears throat> vegetables and um, things like that, I just I just like the feeling of plentitude. And so they tend to be bigger than life. And, and um, you know, I love to garden, I love to cook. And these gorgeous vegetables that I find at the farmer's market just inspire me. And um, I just want to glorify them, you know? And so I paint them large. I paint very loosely watercolors. I um, I start with very wet paint and just sort of splattering it. And then it, from there, I kind of work it up, um, which is totally different from my oil paintings, but it's a different medium. So yeah, I just try to have fun with them. They're organic shapes, they're shiny. Some of them, some of them are lumpy, bumpy and curly. They're just amazing. Did you grow up on like a farm? Like where does this like <laughs> interest? No. no, no, I didn't. I didn't grow up on the farm. I probably wouldn't like it so much if I considered it a chore, but um, no, I had a garden, but I, I, I tend to flower garden um, mm -hmm. just because my soil here is, uh, might have lead in it and stuff. So it's not good for edible things. So, but I, I love gardening, but I've never lived on a farm. It would, I, I would like to, I would love to paint chickens for instance. Chickens, I'm surrounded by farms. Like I live in Jersey, so. I live in Jersey too. Where are you? Where are you? Uh, Colts Neck. I've heard of it. I can't place it. Is that north, south? It's kind of like in the center of Jersey. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Are you not on a farm though? No, it's mainly like my neighbors. I don't own one though. But yeah, I, I could see so. why you're interested in that art form. <laughs> So like when you uh, painting scenery, um, I was looking at the tobacco barn painting, like does that come from like your imagination or is it like more? No, no, I don't paint anything from my imagination. It's always from real life. Um, so you sit in front of it and? Well, a tobacco barn, first of all, it's, it's 30 by 42 and it's a watercolor. So that would be impossible to paint outside and probably try to fly off like a sail. Um, that's from a road trip I was doing, and I was just kind of collecting images of barns, and then when I came home, I painted that in the studio, but it's based on on the, the real thing, and um, again, it's loose. It starts out with, you know, just a big brush, drippy paint, and just kind of splattering it and um, doing that, so it's just it's very impressionistic and if you look closely at it then you'll see that um that there aren't actually real lines there but from a distance you it looks like everything has been drawn out yeah um, but I, I i love barns i mean obviously i, I wouldn't be um I, I should have grown up on a farm because i love barns <laughs> also but i love um factories too i mean i've i've painted like several cement factories i like all the kind of unsung monuments to civilization that hold up our civilization, you know, without a cement factory, we couldn't have sidewalks, we couldn't have roads, they couldn't do buildings. And there's something kind of dinosauric about it. It's big, it's prehistoric, it's basic shapes, it's got rusty stuff, I love rust. And um, so, you know, all these, these things just fill me with kind of a sense of it's beautiful you know driving going past on the train and you see all these abandoned factories and plants and the sunlight's kind of hitting the broken windows just so and I think oh I want to paint that <laughs> whereas um seeing somebody's beautiful mansion doesn't fill me at all with that kind of 
sense that I, I try and want to capture it. There's, it's just like a, they have a story to tell, whereas some gorgeous house doesn't really have a story to tell. These all have history. So I just wanted to just see if there was anything else that you wanted to say about your paintings as a whole and um, like just the theme for the watercolor show because it is very tied into like nature and autumn. Well, I, you know, it, I, I just, you know, I just, I do love nature, but it's not, I don't, I think my painting is more impressionistic than naturistic, you know. Yeah. Um, I just feel like everything has a story to tell and, and the lumpier, bumpier, scalier, rustier, the better. It all, it, it just has a patina and it has a, it has a history and, um, you know, that's, that's what draws me rather than some kind of sunset, which is awesome, but I'm not going to try to paint that. It's going to come up like a Hallmark card. <laughs> yeah, no, I totally understand. I see what you're saying in like, in terms of like the nature and like how it has a story. Cause when you, when I think of like vegetables and food, like you could start off with the seed and it's like a birth and yeah, and um, and it it kind of symbolizes home to me and 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 family, you know, in in a in a way, because then you you buy it, it goes up to my studio, and then afterwards, like if it's still okay, it comes down and gets cooked and eaten. But sometimes it sits in my studio a little too long because <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't look very it. pretty anymore. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, is there anything else you want me knowing or just like the audience in general for the people who are going to see this interview? Because my watercolor isn't typical watercolor. I, I use watercolor and gouache together. Um, yeah. So I find that traditional watercolorists um, look down their noses. They don't, they don't approve. Um, but I find the traditional watercolor is really boring. So oh. <laughs> I, it has to be interesting to me. The subject matter has to be interesting. The process has to be fun. It has to be exploratory. And if I'm gonna do what the typical watercolorist does, which is to draw it all out with pencil and then paint it in, um, it's like, that's a big yawn to me. I'm not, if, uh, if I've already drawn it out, I'm not going back in there. Um, I so I, it's, it's all freehand. I don't, I don't do any pencil sketches. I just start in there with my two inch brush. That's interesting. So how do you get it at, like your, uh, like the detail if nothing is sketched out? It's all freehand? Yeah. Wow. All right. <laughs> I thought it was like, kind of like, like a pencil and then you went in. Oh no, God, that would be so boring. No, I just do, I just start <laughs> painting and, and whatever happens, happens. And, um, you know, if it doesn't do what, what you want it to do, then you try to go with the flow and see what it wants to do. Um, but no, I, I never ever pencil anything, not on my watercolors, not on my oil paints. It's all, yeah. I just start in there with a big brush, no sketch. And I go, I'm, I might, I make corrections as I go along. Sometimes the vegetable gets bigger and bigger and sometimes it's too big and I've got to make it smaller. So, right. you know, it's, an, it's a very organic way of painting. It's very natural and it's not planned. It just, I just try to go with what, what the essence of the item was that's inspiring me. I see all the paintings like in the back, they're very nice. Oh, thank you. Those are oil paintings. That's a, another um, exploring narrative still life. So they have mm. um, just collections of objects and sometimes they tell a story and sometimes the observer has to make their own story. So it's just you, exploration also. You like to, like, how do you place like all the items when you paint them? Like, do you? <laughs> On the floor. There's like, On the floor. right now I have this monster set up and I, put all the stuff out and then I take a picture and I look at the picture and say, no, that's not right. And I keep changing things around and then I start adding stuff and then I take things out and then I swap things. It takes a whole long time to get the um, setup that's saying what I wanted to say. And um, then I paint and sometimes it just takes forever and I get really impatient because I want my floor back. I see. How long does like one, like a painting, like a typical painting take you? Like, 
In oil or watercolor? In watercolor. Oh, not that long. Um, not that long. No, maybe a couple of days. No, so the oils, oils take much. The oils longer. take much longer. Be, um, I mean, some of the watercolor. Yeah, no, a couple of days because then I needed to dry it. I need to think about it. The oils take longer um, unless I'm painting outside. You know, if I do plein air, then I'm out there with my easel and I'm painting it, and then it's done. That's it. So that that would be a couple of hours. Did you have a favorite painting when you were looking at them? I like the tobacco barn the most. I also like the grapefruit one. Uh, there's a Wait. lot of color in that one. Oh, the pink grapefruits? The pink grapefruits, yeah. People like that. I I used to paint kind of more darkly and atmospheric and uh, I enjoyed them, but they didn't sell. So I somebody said, you've got to paint brighter things. And I started, I painted some of those pink grapefruit and they were like, people were buying them and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, they were right. I should paint brighter things. <laughs> so that's where like the vegetables came in. Well, no, the vegetables I was doing, I have some very big dark vegetables, um, the garlic and a big one of um, artichokes and the, I, I, those vegetables I was doing, but I'm doing now smaller, smaller, brighter things, but they tend to be in oil. Well, thank you so much for joining. Well, it was nice you know. meeting you, Nada. It was nice meeting you too.